I recorded it, I can send it later on to all those who are in a moment not able uh, to attend, uh, but um, they will might lie later on perhaps go to YouTube and can watch it. So this is always what we do. So you will find later on in our church group the link. And with this link, you can use then YouTube and, and we'll, uh, we'll find the service after a while. A welcome to all those who haven't been uh, members of our church for a long time or who are just new ones. And so therefore I would like to ask those ones who are new here or haven't been there for a long time, just to say hi and who they are. Um, just unmute shortly your microphone and say um, just only your name and from the congregation or church you come from. That would be nice. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Reverend Obed Shatai with my son here in Piwe. We are from the Methodist Church in Zimbabwe, in Marlborough, Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Bethel and Lucia Gumbo from Zimbabwe University Parish. What uh, else is that? Thank you. Thank you for joining also today. Morning. My name is Gwenya Reginald. I'm from Baptist Church Convention, Zimbabwe. Dari, Zimbabwe. Wonderful. Thanks. We are getting really an ecumenical Morning. service today. It's so lovely. All others are known? Oh, there we have. Some. Hello, my name is. My, my name is Tinashe Gumbo from the Lutheran Church in Sekwa in Harare. Thank you. Thank you. I think all others who we know as members of Martin Luther Church, it's lovely that you share and, and join our service and um, that you are here today. I only, uh, yeah, we, we have perhaps also people in who had birthdays and had other anniversaries. This we normally, um, yeah, share in our church services with a song and, um, yeah, with lots of congratulations. This I only can so now. Um, I wish you all well who are now here, who have um, had perhaps a special day in this last week or weeks uh, before. Um, but um, yeah, at one time when we meet again, then we also can have other kind of celebrations. But at least we meet now online and have a service together, which is lovely. And thanks also for all those who have decided to join. We start with our hymn. Um, this is amazing grace. And I want to say a great thanks uh, at this point. Uh, to uh, Beauty and Simrati Sai, who said they want to do the singing, as well as a great thanks to Dr. Kenneth Matata, who will later on preach our, uh, for, our, for us this sermon and um, yeah, discuss what it means in Genesis 2 that we are all created by God. So I'm looking forward, especially to the sermon, but also now to the singing, and I would love um, to ask. Um, the Rajasai family to come in. And I ask you all others again to mute your phones. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that served the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear. In grace my fears relieved. How precious did the 
We are celebrating this service like all our services. If they are online, if they are lively, if they are at home, if they are in our churches and wherever in which congregation ever. We are celebrating a service never in our own name, but always in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you and also with you. We are having today only short verses out of Psalm 127 who are prescribed for our 15th Sunday after Trinity. And I will read the uh, ones which are uh, typed in black very loud and the others less so that you can fall in at home. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who built it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, in vain the watchman keeps his vigil. It is in vain that you rise up early and go to bed late. Vain too, to eat the bread of toil, for he gives to his beloved sheep. So far, our Psalm 127. Coming together to worship God, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord, our God, for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, brothers and sisters, that I have sinned to my own thought, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask you to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Beauty, can you sing that? Kyrie eleison. Kyrie Eleison, 
Let's listen to the assurance of grace. God does not abandon us. Don't forget that God cares for the downtrodden and for those longing and searching for God's grace. As it said in 1 Peter 5, verse 5b, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and gives them the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest. Glory be to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will to us men, all glory be to God on high, and works to him for may try what falls there dark and ever he bends his ear to every call and offers peace good will to all and comes the trouble spirit. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for your grace, for your grace that is keeping us up, your grace that is helping to move, your grace that is always offering life again and again. This Sunday, God, we are reflecting on what you have given us on earth. What you have given us for in, in, and in our homes, for our own places. What you have given us in the environment around us, as well as in our families and for our friends. Help us to see how we can contribute to preserve this world to preserve our well-being, to preserve that what is that what you want to have, peace on earth and goodwill to everyone. So help us to understand what you have entrusted in us and teach us how to use it, how to move further with that and how to change that what we have gotten into our hands, into action, and deeds for today and tomorrow. Be now with us, with each one of us, with our preachers, with our singers, with everyone who is present here, everyone also who cannot be present in this service but might join them later. Help us to understand that you are the one who entrusted the world into our hands and that we can be part of your co-workers wherever we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first reading is taken from 1 Peter 5, 5b till 11. And I had, I think, no one who wanted to read it so I will read it by myself. And all of you must clothe yourself with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. 
discipline yourself and keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversity, the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. We have now a yeah, choir, small choir contribution from the Ratisai family. And I thank you really very much for that. And at this time, I also want to encourage all those who are here, maybe to prepare something for the next time. Tibate, <laughs> Tibate, 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 so much to Ratizai family. Lovely singing.
And this is a good connection then to our gospel reading, which is taken from Matthew 6, 25 till 34. And I will read out of the New Revised Standard Version. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not uh, sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more vulnerable than them? Can, and can any one of you, uh, by worrying at a simple hour of your life, and why do you not worry, why do you worry about your clothes? See the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows, you, knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. God's word for the people of God. Rakanaka Vangere. Rakanaka Vangere, Rakanaka, Rakanaka Vangere, Rakanaka. Rakanaka Vangeri, Rakanaka, Rakanaka Vangeri, Rakanaka, Dangurinda Puza Puti Rakanaka, Dangurinda Puza Puti Rakanaka, Dangurinda Puza Puti Rakanaka, Dangurinda Puza Puti Rakanaka. Rinne Simba Fangeri, Rinne Simba, Rinne Simba Fangeri, Rinne Simba, Rinne Simba Fangeri, Rinne Simba, Rinne Simba Fangeri, Rinne Simba. Dangurinda kuza kuti Rinne Simba, Dangurinda kuza kuti Rinne Simba. Dangurinda kuza kuti rine simba. Dangurinda kuza kuti rine simba. Gari ende vangeri, gari ende, gari ende vangeri, gari ende. Gari ende vangeri, gari ende, gari ende vangeri, gari ende. Dangurinda kuza kuti ngari 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 ende. Nandi vangeli lim nandi lim nandi vang. Lim nandi, lim nandi, vangeli. Lim nandi, lim nandi, vangeli. Lim nandi, kutala si kuchela si ti. Lim nandi, kutala si kuchela si ti. Lim nandi, kutala si kuchela si ti. Lim nandi. 
Udala si bucela si tilim nanti. Thank you. We are coming now to the Apostolic Creed and we pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He ascended to the death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now thank we all our God, 533 in our Lutheran hymn book, which might be also in other hymn books, if you have another one of the Methodist Church, I am sure it's also there. Now we thank all God, I thank again the Ratisai family for singing it. <clears throat> now thank you our God, with our sentence and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way, with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all harm in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given. The Son and He who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, from this world is us now, and shall be evermore. I am also going later on to send uh, to the Sunday School group this slide so that actually what we try since we do not have Sunday school services now that we try that our kids also get a little bit uh, of um, yeah, education normally I use the gospel reading uh, which with a small cartoon is then there so I will send it again uh, even those kids who might listening now um, can already use it but I will send it later on to them we are now coming to our sermon, which was yeah, introduced with the song, Now We Thank All Our God. And I uh, want to thank um, Dr. Kenneth and Tata for being ready this day to preach to us uh, today. Dr. Mintata, can you come in? Yes. 
it's a problem with connection again. Uh, can, can, can you hear me, uh, Reverend Ute? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, uh, I, I, my, my connection just broke here. So I, if you don't mind, I can use uh, uh, the, the phone for now. Okay. Yes, I, I will... Um, my my computer uh, disconnected, so I can uh, I can use my computer. Thank you so much uh, for for me to uh, to preach uh, today uh, on um, to preach uh, uh, at the at the um, Martin Luther Congregation, uh, and uh, I also want to welcome uh, uh, some colleagues I see here from uh, from our ecumenical uh, networks. Uh, before that, uh, can uh, we just take some uh, a moment uh, to pray? Our gracious God, we we want to thank you uh, because we were created uh, with a purpose, uh, a purpose to uh, relate, a purpose uh, to work, and a purpose uh, to celebrate and enjoy life. And we, we pray the morning as uh, we reflect uh, on these gifts uh, and the tasks you have given us, it may be pleasing uh, to you. Uh, in uh, Jesus' name, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Um, I will be uh, reading from uh, Genesis chapter 2 uh, for our reflection this morning. Uh, I will read from verse 4 of Genesis chapter 2. Uh, and um, they are, are set aside for uh, preaching, but uh, allow me to read uh, the, the whole section uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord made uh, the earth the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared uh, on earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not yet sent rain on earth, and there was no work uh, on the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east them, and there he put uh, the man formed. The Lord made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were plain eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden, from there it twisted into four headwaters. The name of the first is Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Avila, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin, onyx are also there. The name of the second river is Gion. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the 
Tera is Tigris. It runs along the east of the side of Asher. A fourth river is Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of an evil. When you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, it is good, it is not good for men to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the bears in the sky. He brought them to men to see what he would name them. And whatever the men called each living creature, that was its name. So the men gave names of the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable part was found. So the Lord God caused the men to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the, the men's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib. He had taken the man and he brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is now born of bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Uh, this is the word uh, of the Lord. My last thoughts are that uh, this morning we could uh, reflect uh, on uh, why are we here? Uh, what is uh, uh, our purpose of being here uh, on earth? Uh, this is a question that uh, many um, philosophers have been dealing with uh, for, for thousands of years. Asking the question, why uh, are we here? What is our purpose uh, on earth? We do know if Genesis chapter two uh, was trying to respond uh, to a similar question uh, for the ancient generations who were also struggling uh, with the same question. Whichever way we answer this question, a story we have just uh, received here, the story of creation uh, from Genesis chapter 2, gives us a sense of what kind of a divine order assumed how human beings will live on earth. There is a way in which we can sort of have a, an estimation of how God assumed human beings were going to live a life with some kind of purpose uh, on earth. In my read, I identified that uh, three elements that are identified in two, which can also be supported by other uh, sections of the Bible that reflect uh, why we are here. In the first section, we realized that uh, we are told of a creation process in which human beings are not yet mentioned. We are told that uh, when creation was in place, there was no the water to make sure that life could sprout out of the ground. So what we see actually is that before beings are created, there are no suitable conditions for human beings to exist. So the first processes that are put in place set up a condition in which human beings can live a life of food. 
wants to be uh, presented uh, in this uh, uh, story, human beings are first and foremost are created uh, to enjoy life, to be fulfilled, to be happy. This seems to be the one main reason why human beings are created. And for this reason, there are two categories of conditions that God put in place for human beings to enjoy life. The category of uh, resources are resources for utility. That is resources for use. Those things that can be useful for human beings to have life. First, there is water. Water is growing uh, and it, it uh, nourishes the earth and the earth produces plants. And these plants, we know in other creation uh, stories that these plants are designed for food. So sustain a human being. So human beings can enjoy life if they have adequate resources that can sustain uh, their existence. They can be happy. But we also see that the things that are created that are not for direct use for sustenance, but they are designed for, for joy. Uh, we are told that there, were gold, there was uh, gold, there were different kinds of, of uh, minerals, there were different kinds of that were beautiful to see. When we remember actual ancient story, we remember that there is a, a reference that at every stage of creation, we are two things were good when they were created. In other words, they were not only useful, they did not only sustain life, but they were beautiful to see. In other words, God intended in God's creation, we should have life, this life must be sustained by God's life because God into the nostrils of a human being so that the human being could live. God provided for the human being so that the human life could be sustained. But also God offered other things that the eye could behold and enjoy. In other words, God wanted human beings to live a life of fulfillment and joy. For this reason, if human beings participate in God's created order in the way God intended, one of our missions on earth is to make sure that human beings are happy, human beings are fulfilled, and human beings are satisfied. If we are participating in the ongoing work of creation, cooperating with what God did and what God continues to do, it means that we are serving God in God's hand when those are us and those who enjoy our influence and power are enjoying our life in its fulfillment. But this does not mean that this life was only going to be a life of joy with no challenges. That's why we have read actually in, uh, in the gospel uh, that there is a possibility that in this life of joy, there would also be pain. But the difference between those who are in the created order of God and those who are living outside this term of understanding life, for them, life ceases to be enjoyable when they are faced with challenges. But for those who are living in what God intended, they are able to live life of joy even in the midst of challenges and anxieties. They do not depend. Their joy and fulfillment does not only depend on the external conditions of their life. They also find in inner fulfillment in the midst of pain. Actually, there are possibilities that there are many people who are going to live environment where it is not joyful, where their external conditions are pressing. But if they have the gift of this creation from God, they must be able to have moments in which they can enjoy the fact they are alive. They are Even though they struggle, 
even though they are fighting so that everyone is enjoying life. They must be able to struggle in the midst of the joy that God purposed. Actually, joy and celebration and enjoyment are meant to be fuel for struggle, for more joy and fulfillment and happiness. And this is why we must constantly go back to this purpose of creation, that we can be full, happy, joyful, and what God intended uh, for our creation. There is a second reason that we read in Genesis chapter 2. God also created them so that they could work. We read actually in verse 15 that the Lord took man and put him in the garden to work and to take care of it. There, are, there is another creation story which labor is praised uh, as a punishment and as Actually, when we read uh, from the whole Exodus story, we realize that when labor became corrupted, labor became slavery. Work was no longer part and parcel of God's creation. Labor was now a result of sin, and all those who were laboring were laboring out of pain. But the original story shows that Labor was uh, a reflection that we were created in the image of God because God was a God of labor. God was a God of work. It was a God who had worked and rested, but continued to work and to rest. In other words, if we are going to labor the way God designed for our creation, we must work free from the burden of sin. We must work as part of continuity of creation, adding to the beauty and the joy of life. Labor is supposed to be that which aid life. But there is a correction here which we are given in Psalms 127 that we cannot put our trust in our lives. We can hope that our lives are going to be fully sustained because we work. Actually, there are many people who work the hardest, but their lives are a misery. It's not labor in which we put our trust. It is our labor in God. It is our labor in which we entrust to God that can give us fulfillment of life. And that is why no matter how hard we work, no matter how intelligent we become, no matter how many opportunities fall before us, we must never forget to put our trust in God. Because it is God whose labor has given us life and whose labor purposes us our salvation. It is this God who never sleeps nor slumbers. It is this God who is always at work to fulfill uh, his purpose uh, for our lives. We are told when we read from scriptures uh, that uh, while God rested on the seventh day, God continues to work uh, in us uh, for our salvation. The salvation that was accomplished by Jesus Christ when died on the cross 2,000 years ago is constantly at work in us to present us full and perfect before God. And this salvation is going to be fulfilled at the end of time. So our God is who is at work. And he is the God we must summon in our work. Because sometimes we work the labor that does not produce. There are many people today who are actually putting a lot of effort and get very little out of this work. We want to pray to a God of labor who must transform the work of our hands to the joy of our lives. We want to pray to a God who transforms slave labor into labor of creation and joy. 
This is the second reason why God has put us on earth, so that we can continue with the ministry of creation. And that is why people must enjoy the work they are doing. Because the moment people are no longer enjoying this work, they are now are into slave labor. And this is why God delivered them from, the, from Egypt. Because they, they, were in, they were creating, but they were creating out of pain, sweat, and tears. And God desires that all of us can be delivered from that kind of labor. Where we sweat, where we mourn in our work, and where we do not enjoy the fruits of our work. So God created us so that we can enjoy life. God created us so that we can work and become co-creators with him. So God created us for the best thing. We read from verse 18 that that human being was created. He was man. He was alone. He was given the animals. But he never found full satisfaction of companionship. But then God created another human being. And we can hear the new thick skills of the being being awakened. When the human being saw another human, his joy was awakened and he celebrated this other human being. Someone whom he could see as born of my born, flesh of my flesh. A song came out of the realization of another. And this was one purpose for creation that we could relate. The thing why God created us is so that we could relate. The question is what kind of relationship? We can see from the first created human being, that relationship must be a relationship that creates a, a celebration of mutuality. That is, we are happy to be with the other. The only kind of relationship that God desires is that kind of relationship that creates a mutual enrichment where human beings have fullness of life and celebrate because of the other. God does not intend that our relationships are the relationships of injustice, oppression, dominion, and uh, 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 you using the other. God intends that that relationship with the other is that uh, of celebration and joy. And this is what we see uh, when uh, Adam was given uh, this uh, is, is, is new. Now, if we just look at this template of creation that God creates us so that we can become productive and co-creators with God, that God has created us so that we can uh, enjoy the fullness of life that has created us so that we can be in fruitful relationship with the other. The question is, what is the state of your own life? Do you think you are living the purpose of God? What is the state of your happiness? Are you happy because others are sad? What is the state of your the source of your joy. Are you, jo are you joyful because you are accumulating as much resources as possible, but they are no longer meaningful as far as they are useful? They are no longer useful as far as they bring joy to you and to others. What is the source of your joy? What is your sense of work? Are you in slavery or you are in your labor? What is your state relationships? Are you in a relationship of joy 
and of or you are in a relationship of pain are you in relationships of justice and fairness or you are in relationships of oppression and dominion how do people see you when they relate with you do they feel encouraged empowered and strengthened when they relate with you or when they see you they see an enemy they see an oppressor and they see someone who draws life out of them we actually this morning reconnect to the purpose of god for our lives the purpose why we are here we are here so that we can be happy and be a source of happiness for others we are here uh, so that we can work we can be creators who find satisfaction in the things we create that become useful for us and for others we are here so that we enjoy relationships with ourselves with others and of course ultimately our relationship with god this morning i invite you to connect again to this pivot of lives, why we are created go back connect again to the god of creation because this god of creation will bring you purpose to your life this purpose is the purpose not only for yourselves but also for those you are going to come across so that you can impact lives for joy you can impact lives for creation you can impact lives uh, for fruitful relationships may god do this morning and days to come amen let's pray gracious god we want to thank you that we are not here on earth and we are on earth for a purpose to be joyful to be co-creators with you and to relate with you we pray that we may read this purpose for our lives in jesus name we pray amen thanks so much dr Mjata, for your encouraging so um, to come back really to creation and what we means really to be co-creators with god lots of thoughts for for us for today and for the whole week thanks so much for this we are coming and answering now with our next song uh, or hymn to that and i asked um, the uh, Ratisai family again to help us. 501, he leaded me. <coughs> He leadeth me, oh, oh blessed thought, oh, oh praise in the comfort from wherever I do, wherever I be still, this God said that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand he leadeth me, his faithful follower I would be, for oh, by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes my sins of purpose do, sometimes when I was flown. By waters come, for flow, see if this God said that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for oh, by his hand he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp my hand in my Lord, ever may my Lord reply. For turn, whatever Lord I say, 
that is my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand he leadeth me. He's faithful for all I would be. For by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victories won, hey, bless me, oh, I will not please his God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. He's faithful for all I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Thanks so much. We are coming now to our announcements. Um, as we have to say that since many Sundays now, our next uh, service will be always still only online on Zoom, as well as it will be always recorded. It takes some time uh, that I can send it then through, but it will be in the course of the Sunday, always then on YouTube and also in our church group. By this time, I saw now that we have a few guests here. If someone of you also wants to join, or we have a, one a big church uh, group of uh, Martin Luther Church, just send me a short message or an email and um, I will add you then there. That will be nice. Um, for our announcements, we continue now with the offering from last Sunday. Last Sunday's offering, uh, we received 2,700 RGTS. And um, we have here again, and I think it's also known by now, our uh, payment uh, possibilities. And I really would like to encourage you also to donate, um, as well as you also can donate to our church administrator, Molly Muhungo. Uh, in the office, but just make an appointment um, when uh, that she is also there. As I said, we are still online. Reverend Sevilla and myself are available online on phone, WhatsApp. I will uh, be next week uh, back also in Zimbabwe. So we will, yeah, at one time also again see each other, but at least online we can chat, we can talk and um, we should not be uh, discouraged really yeah, to work together, even if it's on an online basis. I uh, want to say uh, just two other things. Um, there was a great help uh, to Dr. Moyo. I could read that and I think our chair uh, has reached all of you uh, with his announcement how uh, great the help was from Martin Luther Church as well as also from other congregations after um, the fire and uh, yeah, the destroy, destruction of the whole house of uh, Dr. Moyo as well as of uh, Victor Moyo and the two families. Um, great help to each and everyone. And as uh, Mr. Mpala has said, uh, the donation is still possible. Just make an appointment with uh, our church administrator and uh, Molly will be there. And if you want to add something, it's nice. It's also nice even if you only think of the family and help. We also have um, many other people who need help. And in this regard, I think I just also want to say again, it's really good uh, that on the level of the diocese, uh, we have our um, yeah, help, which is uh, um, food aid uh, for people who are in need, that this is also continuing at least a little to support people. Um, there you can ask also in our partnership office or in our COVID-19 committee. So far, I have not received any other announcements. Um, I also don't know if someone of the uh, church council is on, 
Um, so please to always check our uh, church uh, WhatsApp group. Um, if anything is urgent, you will find it also during the week there. On Wednesday, we will also continue again with our Wednesday evening uh, short um, devotions. Um, yeah, so far our announcements, we are coming now to our intercession prayer. Let us pray. Our God, we are thankful. We are thankful that you have created this world. Created this world and not as a place where you are far, but where you are in the middle. And where you have created all of us to enjoy life, to enjoy life in fullness, to enjoy that what you have given to us. So help us, our God, that we always again and again can get ideas, thoughts, and courage to work further for the happiness, the fulfillment of life for each and every one. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, sometimes we need courage. We need courage to survive, even when life is so hard. And you know, for how many people life is hard in this crisis of COVID, in this crisis, wherever we are. Help us that we can struggle through, help each and every one in the specific situation where he or she is. We need this thought and this trust in you, that you can, that you are not far, that you have created us, and you are with us, and that we always can trust in you. Give us this kind of knowledge, this kind of inner feeling to trust in you in order to survive. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. But you have created us in order to labor, to labor, which is hard, to join this ministry of creation of you and to add again and again to your work which you have started. To be your co-creators is a huge challenge. But help us to search for that what it means for today and for tomorrow, in our own working places, in our activities in church, in our activities in the neighborhood, in the families, with friends. Open us that we can see what is needed and that we also can listen to the cries of others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, help us, as we heard, to establish relationships, relationships where we really can join together, where we can work together, where we can accept the other one as someone also who has wonderful ideas who has wonderful gifts, and where we can enjoy together that what you have given us. Help us that we all can learn to strive together for justice and for peace and for the fulfillment of that what you have started in this world. But in your mercy, hear our prayers. But you know, worldwide we are thinking and hearing that COVID-19 will not end very soon. The worldwide church, everyone, not only Christians are suffering. Many people do not know anymore how to go further. Businesses have been closed. Situation is worse. Help that everywhere in this world, right decisions are done to live with the disease, to find solutions, but first of all, yeah, to make the best out of it. For this, we need your ideas, your help, and that we trust in you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. But there is so much in our shoulders, in our minds, what is troubling us. And in silence, we can bring all that to you.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is good to know that we are going in the next week not alone. We are always going with God's blessings. So God bless you and God keeps you. God make God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. God lift up God's countenance upon you and show you God's motherly care and love and give you as well as the whole world peace. So go in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be a blessing and be blessed. Amen. At the end, we are singing our song together, which is a blessing hymn for all of us. God, dismiss us with your blessing. And may I ask again the Ratisai family to help us. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us eat your love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration. For your gospel's joyful sound, may the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your proof and we be found. Savior, when you love shall call us. From our struggling pilgrim way, let no fear of death upon us. God knows so much to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless day. A great thanks to all of you. Now, especially also, since we had only one family singing the whole uh, service too. Really great thanks to Beauty and Sim Ratisai for joining and for helping us to make the service lively again. And I really want to encourage also others who love to, um, yeah, to join in. You have now the chance with online services all to sing solo. This is something. And a very, very special thanks to uh, Dr. Kenneth Matata. Um, wonderful yeah, thoughts about creation, what creation means for us today and how we are co-creators. Thoughts of yeah, wisdom for this week we have. I thank you all, especially also for joining the service. It's always wonderful. We have, we had sometimes 25 people. Now we have 22 joining. And I think these are not only 22. These are many families who are joining together. This is lovely. At least so we can be um, yeah, a communion. And thanks also to our ecumenical guests from the Methodist and the Baptist Church and maybe also from other churches. You are always welcome. Join again and yeah, give us your numbers, um, then we can always directly invite you. I will stop now the sharing or, or the, the recording, uh, which... Uh, or